Okay, hello everyone, and we are back. Thanks for staying with us. We have a special guest. This is like the old Tonight Show here, where they bring special guests on and everything. Hey, Richard. Hey, hey, hey. We have with us Jeff Greco from Heavy Real Brewing. Hey, Jeff. What's, what's up? up, buddy? Hey, guys. What's going on? Jeff, uh, a couple of congratulatory things for Jeff. First of all, a new baby. Congratulations. Thank hey. you. Hey. How, old, how old is he now? Uh, seven weeks. Seven weeks? He's starting to yeah. crawl? Not yet. <laughs> okay. You he's, start, he's starting to hold the head up. So. Starting to hold. That's good. <laughs> when he yeah. gets a little bit older, you're going to use him to clean the mash tongues or what? Oh, hell yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Child labor is great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you do that yourself, right, Chris? Yeah. I have, that, when we opened, we had them washing dishes in the back. It was great. You say that to that? Well, <laughs> no, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> that definitely helps. And also, uh, congratulations, second anniversary. Yep. You know, unfortunately, you know, as I was talking with Chris before, not the same celebration that maybe four or five months ago you would have anticipated mm. yeah. you know i remember i was there last year for your i was the both of your guys first anniversary it was really a nice time at both places so unfortunately not what you anticipated you know i i, mm. I said before i'm starting to hate the word virtual because everything is virtual this and virtual that you know yeah. I, would, I would much rather have you guys down here in the basement having a beer with you rather oh, than yeah. talking to you on video <laughs> And yeah. then we'd probably only be audio, Richard, so people wouldn't have to see our ugly mugs on here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> These are faces built for a radio. No, yeah. for sure, for sure. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Not these two. These two young, good-looking guys over here, Not definitely not on that side. <laughs> but you also, Jeff, we also have news from you. You know, I know that you've been there at Heavy Reel and really been killing it there at that location in Seaside Heights, but you are be moving to a maybe larger location? Yeah, so <sighs> cat's kind of out of the bag. Um, yeah, we bought a building, uh, still in Seaside Heights. So I don't know the word for it, but it's gonna be about eight or nine times bigger, the floor space, how it is now. So nice. um, got a new system coming, a 10 barrel system mm. um yeah just uh i don't know we, we just kind of wanted to grow a little bit and we had an opportunity and um yeah we're excited to take the next leap excellent awesome. excellent so it's still going to be in town and uh yeah. really well the town's not really that big so it's not that far away from your location right now yeah i walked i walked it the other day it's not <laughs> Not a bad walk from the new place to the old place. Oh, that's good. But, uh, you know, with this stuff going on, um, we're still going to be in the older spot for the time being. Um, mm -hmm. You know, who knows? We wanted to be in the new spot by early summer, but now it's not looking so good. <laughs> As you can imagine, everything's yeah. closed down. And, sure. Um, but we're paying for a brew house that's sitting in Nebraska. So, mm -hmm. but one day we'll be there. What's what equipment you're gonna have, Jeff? Uh, we bought uh, from Alpha. They're the same ones that has uh, Source Brewing. Bought their okay. equipment. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, pretty yeah. pretty excited. They're good guys to work with. Um, got two twenty barrel fermenters, two tens, and a twenty barrel bright. So oh, nice. um, looking to do a lot more cans and all the crazy shit that we do. <laughs> That's great. And Source has a beautiful brew house there. I was there. Yeah, they do. Yeah, beautiful brew house. I actually did a, um interview with Greg and Phil and the guys from there. Uh, oh, cool. I did an yeah, interview with them. And, and actually, part of our plans this summer were to go up there, Richard and I, and do a podcast from the brew house. So I don't know. Yep. I got kind of pushed off a little bit, huh, Richard? Seems That's so. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Definitely seems so. Uh, yeah, we. I actually went to their place while they were building it and uh, walked around with those guys. It's crazy to see, you know, how far it's come since, uh, geez, that's probably a year and a half ago now. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, uh, yeah, stoked to have a new system. Um, 
Hopefully I don't break it, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so your old one gonna be up for sale again once you're once you're all settled in? Yeah, it's for sale right now. Anybody Is that it wants for, it, come it's on. It's for sale right it. now. I, yeah. Got, Rich, you wanna go keep, halves with me on it? We'll open it. We'll open that brewery. We're Ooh. keeping a couple of the fermenters, but uh we'll keep... <laughs> Yeah, it's you're making it's some like, sense. It's, it's huh? a nice system. It's a uh, psycho brew. Uh, well, well that before. isn't that what yours is. Yeah, that's what you have. The psycho brewing you have now. Yeah, right? yeah. Right now we're on the psycho brew. Um, I think um, trying to think of who is someone else out in Brick, South Jersey. Brick City had, had it, brew. and uh, Ludlam has it too. Okay, Ludlam I has the psycho brew. Yeah. Yep. Okay, nice. Pretty good stuff. Very nice. Very nice. Now with all this pandemic stuff, et cetera, going on what has anything changed as far as what you're brewing and your brew schedule etc i had asked chris this before um yeah I, I mean a little bit it's actually i get to focus even more so on what i want to do now so um i've been putting a lot of stuff in barrels like we started our uh, barrel aged sour program so we've been <sighs> brewing a lot and putting it into barrels um really just doing IPAs and sours, uh, and every once in a while throwing in one of our lighter beers just to uh, have something a little bit different for people ordering online. Mm -hmm. You know, we had talked about the beer you're drinking off air uh, before we started recording. Oh, cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the collab that you're drinking now? Yeah, so uh, it's our collab with Icarus, um, Just Wing It, it's in Nitro this time. Um, we brewed it probably close to a year and a half ago. The, the name actually comes from Jason came over to do a collab. We didn't know what we wanted to do. Uh, we knew we wanted to do a stout, so we just threw shit together and uh, just went, <laughs> just wing it. That's how it came about. That's a, hold that up again. Let us see it. Yeah. Hey, tell us more about the stout end of it. Yeah, so it's a, a coffee stout. Um, really, with the uh, nitro, you get a ton of chocolate. We got four different roasted malts in here. So uh, it's pretty complex. Easy drinker, though. It's only 6%-ish. So it's really killer beer. I like it a lot. Mm. It's like adult chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> now, the adult barrel project, now, you don't have much room in your current place for barrels. We do now that no, nobody's there. <laughs> yeah, no one in the, that's true. You got no one in the top of them. That's not right. I'm, I'm sure Chris can attest because I've been to oh, yeah. this place too. Yeah. Like without people coming in and not having to worry about like how it looks, there's mm -hmm. shit everywhere. There's barrels everywhere. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If they told yeah, us we could open next week, we'd have to wait like a three weeks to clean it up. And, like, move <laughs> Chris, yeah. is that is that what your place is like too in there? Yeah, we have uh we have four barrel we have four barrels up front now, and we have a pallet <laughs> of cans in our tap room and yeah. <laughs> um, grain bags everywhere. It's it's a kegs up front, so it's like yeah. whatever we we're like we don't care right now. Just push the tables to the side. Yeah, that, no, we, we can we come actually, in anyway. We put all our glasses and flights away and just anything uh, that could break, we just <laughs> threw everything in storage for now. Uh, honestly, that's what, honestly, that's what the basement is like right now. I didn't want to do it from that room we've been doing it from, Richard. I had to be down here in the basement. Luckily, right. the signal is holding out. So, got, this is like what you're seeing behind me. He's the only clean place. In the entire basement, you know, I got everything out of the way. I actually even dusted the bar a little bit, so that's the only. Clean. And actually, if you went if you went close up behind me, you'd see the dust on the back bar and the glass and everything like that. The other side of this computer, Richard, all of our equipment from the last podcast we did is still on the other side of this computer. I have like five microphones. I have the mixing board. It's all on the other side of here. It's like a museum to how podcasts used to be. Yes, yes. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like there's a curtain. You know, don't don't look at the man behind the curtain. So I'm looking at it all, and I can see, and and I have the doors to the back storage area with my uh, barrel that has the Belgian ale in it. 
staring at me and everything like this, but I'm not turning around the computer so no one else can see it here now. Yeah, and, yeah I don't want people I coming into our place yet. <laughs> no. Okay. no, definitely not. Well, th that's one advantage, you see, then you don't have anyone coming in the tap room. You got everything taken. Then you become true, right? <laughs> you don't yeah, have anyone right. coming in the tap room. <laughs> I mean, if we're... <laughs> For us, this is uh, I, it's cool being out with Chris because he's like the same size. Like this mm -hmm. time for us is our busiest time because we would have had AC Beer Fest, we would have had our anniversary, oh, yeah. and yeah. then we would have had Memorial Day weekend, all right. and, and the Point Pleasant Beer Fest, all back to back to back. So like being Oof. as small as we are, it's hard to save beer and send beer, and so it's kind of nice that everything got pushed back. But I mean, it sucks that. <laughs> Man. All the shit's going on and we're closed. But uh yeah, we're just trying to just trying to survive, you know, week to week, make it work. And, and I'm sure like that. we were saying before, you miss the social aspect of it too. I'm sorry you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well you I might know. not yeah. <laughs> I, I don't really, yeah. I, some I mean, you know, I I've been brewing there so much that uh like it's hard for me to be there on the weekend just because I need like a mental break sometimes. But uh, yeah. yeah, I do miss like the summer vibe when the brewery's popping and you know, I'd stop in and have a couple beers. I'm definitely gonna miss that. But uh, yeah. it's, it's definitely like kind of a stress relief just having mm -hmm. time to think stuff out, plan stuff a little bit better instead of just showing up and brewing whatever we can, you know. Yeah. Now, are you still working at the school too? Uh, I mean, I am till the end of the year, but right now we're not in school, so you're just on um, everything's on the online classes, yeah. etc. Yep. Yeah, I know that. That's a lot of challenges. That's a lot of changes too. So. And they, you know, they announced the schools are closed in Jersey for the rest of the year. Chris, how, yep. you, your kids are a little younger. How did they? How did they take that? Um, I have a middle schooler and a sixth grader who is disappointed that he's not getting like to go through the promotion ceremony he's not yeah. getting like the sixth grade trip he's not but they i think they both like the online classroom stuff but my son in particular he's missing a lot of um yeah the 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 moving on to middle school things yeah you know? sure yeah um and that's the same i have a lot of friends whose kids are high school seniors and and oh, I yeah. have a couple of nieces that are high school seniors in there, and yeah. you know they're uh, you know they're missing missing out on on some of the stuff going on. But uh, yeah. you know from from our side here, you know we have a lot of businesses that are you know uh, ancillary that branch out from the breweries, et cetera. The restaurants, Chris, you have one of the uh, big uh, beer bars in oh, Ocean yeah. County, right across yeah. the parking lot, Breakers. Uh -huh. and, Glad to see that they reopened recently. Yeah, they, they, they did shut down for a while, but they're finally, they just recently reopened. So, I mean, obviously the bar isn't open, but uh, but to see them surviving through mm -hmm. this is good. You know. They're doing takeout food, I guess. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. actually we did, a, we did a show from there last year, Richard. I don't know if you were there that time. I think I missed it. They actually, it was a, they did a brewer's, uh, yeah. Salute the brewers that night, and there was a lot of breweries there. I don't, know. Jeff, did you come that day? I forget. No, I went for the uh, the backward flag, and I did a tap takeover. Um, okay. A couple, uh, I lose track of time, but yeah, Breakers is awesome. Katie's awesome over there. It's a good yeah. spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I know we did that, but we I know a lot of folks were there because uh, Bolero Snort was there that yeah. night. You know, a lot of the a lot of the breweries came in there. It was really a uh, it was really a good experience. It was really mm -hmm. nice. And like I said, hopefully we can get back. We can get back to that type of stuff. You know, we yeah. can get back to the, that, you know, uh, you know, back to that social aspect of it and everything. So, so Jeff, you were there at the brew house today. What were you brewing today? Uh, we boiled off a sour today. Um, okay. So a collab we're doing. So we boiled that off today. And uh Mashed in another one that will sit for probably a week or two mm -hmm. <laughs> and get really funky and then uh boil that one off and just keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Are you like are you like salivating, uh looking at the new brew house when that comes in on 
the different beers you can make and how many different beers. Do you already have like a plan in place of what your schedule is going to be? A plan? You know who you're talking to? <laughs> <laughs> There's never a fucking plan with that. Jeff, I apologize. <laughs> yes, I do know who I'm talking I, I, I do know who I'm talking to ever since that dark night in February where <laughs> where Jesse and your mother-in-law didn't want to let me into the into yeah. the brew house to do an interview with you. But no, then no, you wound up feeding me pizza that night. So Yeah, no plan. Just our only plan from the beginning is just try to brew good <laughs> shit, get better every batch we do. Mm -hmm. um, I'm honestly kind of worried that I'm going to miss uh, I call it like the small batch fuck around, like where we just get to do whatever we want. Like we brewed a pizza yeah. IPA. I mean, like, yes, I remember that. I don't yeah. know if I can do that with ten <laughs> barrels, you know. Yeah, that's risky. So, yeah. Well, that's, um, you got to keep you got to keep the pilot system so you could yeah. just make those weird beers every now and then, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to figure out right now is like how do I keep doing kind of what makes me happy, but at the same time actually have like a sustainable business sure. that we can actually have employees and delivery drivers and all that fun stuff that comes along with it sure so. hey jeff what's your favorite beer to brew uh like that i like drinking or to brew because kind of the brew days are all i hate brewing stouts <laughs> they're dirty they're messy <laughs> I love. I guess cats. sours. Yeah, I mean, my sour brew. Day, I brewed two sours yesterday. My whole brew day was four and a half hours. So, pro I'm really lazy when it comes to brewing. So I like to be in and out. So, try sours. You, you know, I I'm kind of with you. I got because I started doing brewing a bag about a year ago. Yeah. And it saves so much freaking time, and it's so oh, much yeah. easier to clean up and everything. Dude, I hate graining out. Still yeah. to this day, I fucking hate graining out. <laughs> I hate. Hey, so much easier to clean up and everything. And everyone said, oh, you're watching, you're going to miss your gravity numbers. I haven't missed any numbers ever since yeah. I started. I've done probably at least 20 batches with the Bruin Big and never missed my gravity numbers. I even bought a a pulley system and I just set up like a like a ladder and I pull up the grain and yeah. And all I have to worry to is, just, hmm, should I squeeze it or shouldn't I squeeze it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hate brewing. I hate brewing stouts just because the you know typically we do like a three or four hour, five hour boil. The IPAs like you can ask Chris too. They you know you got hops clogged in the ch clogged in the chiller. You got to oh, drop yeah. it to, drop it to the whirlpool temp, which is like another hour in the process. It's just I like to be in and out, and nice and easy grain outs, and uh, so sou <laughs> sours are probably my favorite brews, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm sorry you said you like doing stouts I love stouts, I, heard, I yeah. thought you said yeah. no I love cook I love brewing stouts yeah but sours are probably my least favorite because it's like for me it's it's we're doing kettle sours and it's just a multi-day process it's like a brew, the brew day that never ends for me on on sours <laughs> um so, I mean, that's that's what i love about like talking to other brewers because it's different for everybody you yeah know? but like right. stouts yeah i love brewing stout any dark beers i love brewing dark beers i um, had a i had a hose pop during a stout brew day and i have it's probably i have probably have like i had stout literally all over the brewery just because <laughs> the hose popped and it was spraying everywhere <laughs> It was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> stuck, what, stuck, what I love is uh, I had I had something similar, and what I love is we have like the security cameras in the in the brewery, and I was able to go back and like record the moment when the the hose popped and the pump was just shooting beer straight up into the air. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I had that happen, and uh, like early on, probably one of the first like ten beers we were brewing. So it was late. It it was like probably oh. midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and I'm oh. finally eating dinner at like Chinese shitty Ch Seaside Heights Chinese food, like off the bar, and I'm just like <laughs> in the zone. And all of a sudden, I see steam coming out of the back. I'm like, "What is going on?" <laughs> the the, po the connection just popped off. There was beer flowing everywhere. <laughs> oh, we end up yielding one half keg of that batch. 
<laughs> oh no we're selling this at twenty dollars a pint yeah <laughs> right <laughs> it's an exclusive <laughs> now, Very Jeff, magical. are you now you you're not doing delivery you're doing takeout pickup right no we're doing yeah we're delivering we're doing are you delivering? Uh, yeah all ocean county um and we're doing manisquan area okay. and then if you know our insiders we're doing like the allentown area too okay just because we have we have two employees that live in those areas so okay. they're down okay. to take it there so they're bringing it on the way home yeah um so uh, we've been delivering just mainly ocean county though okay like we get a lot of brick a lot of point pleasant a lot of uh bayville mm -hmm. tom's river okay and chris you're basically about 10 mile radius of where you are yeah, we're you Ocean are. County, but only yeah, we only go as far north as basically South Tom's River for us. We've got a, quite a few calls from Brick and Point Pleasant, but it's like you guys got to make it worth our while to drive. That Chris, I was actually going to text you. <laughs> I meant to, I was going to text you two weeks ago because I was craving the yellow cake. For you, I, I would have brought the yellow cake. I would have brought. I was going to see if you're delivering. <laughs> I just ordered it. Well, Chris, why don't you talk about the yellow cake cream mail, please? The That's, best. You know, and I wanted, I'm going to ask you guys a summertime question because it's starting to get towards summertime, even mm -hmm. though it's going to be the weirdest summer ever at the Jersey Shore. Oh, sure. Yeah. But yep. tell us about the yellow cake because that's actually one of the beers I ordered from you. Um, it's, um, it's, it's a deceiving because a lot of people want, think that it's going to be this sweet, like cake like beer. And it's not, it's just a, it's the cream ale, but it's like a very straight up cream ale. Mm -hmm. um brew it with corn flaked corn um it's a really simple grain bill uh but it's what, what we refer to as our gateway beer because mm -hmm. people come in they're like what's like a miller light what's like a coors light what's like a what's like a budweiser it's like well the only thing we have even close to that is the cream ale and we pass them a pint of it across the bar and they go this is delicious. And then they're like, well, you should try some of the other stuff too <laughs> while you're here. Yeah. So, Habanero IPA. Yeah. So we, <laughs> so we draw them in with the cream ale and, and then we try it. We hook them with the, with the other stuff, with the, yeah. the FYs and then the IPAs and, and whatnot. So that's an, that's a nice, that's a, that's a nice beer. Nice crisp summer. Well, let me ask yeah. you, you know, while we're talking about summer, mm -hmm. what beer, Chris, what beer says summer to you? It could be a macro beer. It doesn't have to be your own beer. You know, I want to I wanna talk about happy stuff, not about quarantines and pandemics. What beer says summertime to you? Um, truly hard seltzer? Is that the no. <laughs> um, no um, what's a summer beer? Um, Corona with limes. I don't know. I drink I drink stouts in the summertime, so I don't know what it's. Oh, well, <laughs> Richard is the same. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's they're good any time of the year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean I, that hef that blueberry hefeweizen is that's when mm, we, nice. we brew yeah. it in the sub we that we only do blueberry in the summer, so that's for me is our our, our summer beer. Yeah. Jeff, how about you? Um, I mean macro definitely Corona with limes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i mean like uh, i'm a big uh you know sour saison barrel age saison mm. sour beer in the summer mm. crack like a nice uh chester king or something like that nice nice very nice very nice richard and i actually spoke to um um sean and amanda from the seed living beer project it's going to be open in oh, cool. atlantic city yeah yeah and their focus is saison and not sours yeah, no, right, yeah, Richard? that's awesome. Yeah, he said he won't call anything a sour, although there definitely will be beers with that type of profile. I'm yeah. like, no, that's an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's that's nice. that, that, from a marketing sense, that makes a lot of sense. Just, I just won't call it sour. That, Richard, it how does, about you? What, what's the summertime? Because, yeah. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. The, it makes a lot of sense because when we, we have, you know, what we our Berliner voice, we call it a sour. Mm -hmm. and people go like, Ooh, a sour, ooh, oh, whatever. But the people who look for sours go for it. Mm -hmm. But and so, but there's a lot of people who are just turned off by the uh, the word sour, right? Uh, even though it's, I try to say to them like, 
it's like a refreshing lemonade beer, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like at this point beer. too, how many how many people get hung up by the word IPA when there's how many oh, gazillion tons, variations of yeah, IPA? Tons, tons, yeah. Like, can you even yeah. compare a milkshake IPA to a West Coast IPA? Well, that's They're almost that's, a different class of beer. Yeah, but that's the funny thing too is we brought our our milkshake IPA to a couple beer fests or whatever, and people are like milkshake in the summertime, and it's like but it's, it's mango. <laughs> right. And they're like, I don't right. want something that heavy. It's like, it's not heavy. It's not a heavy beer. <laughs> right. right. Hey, well, hey Chris, I got a question for you. Yeah. Are you still brewing uh West coast or not? Or not? Cause I'm br- sorry. I'm bringing back like weekly. We have, I have a mix. I have a few West coasts and then I have a few, any IPAs and yeah. I'm all over I, the world. I know like the sales on the West Coast, like uh, IPAs aren't, you know, through the roof like they are with any other IPA, but I still like crave like uh like Cascade, Centennial, Simcoe. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, that's the um well the habanero, the I love that beer. I have, yeah, a, I have a beer that's just that beer without the habanero. Uh, oh yeah, the base. The, it's our two minutes of midnight. And it's oh, cool. just a double dry hop, double IPA. Centennial, Cascade, um, Columbus, um, it's Simcoe, and right now I'm out of it. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we just the whole we just started. Down. We brewed uh, a West Coast called Moonstone Beach, like probably three weeks ago. We put it out. I just rebrewed it because I loved it so much. It's just Mosaic Cascade, like every five minutes, mm-hmm. and like cream ale yeast as the. It's just like classic kind of west coast with a little bit of the east coast you know mosaic yeah. flair to it yeah i think that style is coming back yeah. man i really do well the What's what i brewed today was a um was our we don't have my problem is i don't have like a middle of the road like easy drinking like low abv ipa so today i made our uh, our citra mosaic but it's more of like a, it's not that northeast citra mosaic yeah. ipa it's a west coast like crisp ipa with like a, a you know a bit of citra but mostly a mo- mosaic up for, on it that sounds good it does nice. you know why don't you can you chris or jeff give a description to our viewers what would a west coast ipa what would it look like what's the difference between that and the northeast uh or a, I mean, a, a new england whatever you want to call it Wait, you want a description of West Coast or New England? West Coast. West Coast, I would say uh, higher carbonation, right, Chris? Mm-hmm. Uh, you definitely have to have like some a bunch of the sea hops in there, like no, Centennial no, Cascade, you know, yeah. the Cascade, <laughs> definitely, um, yeah. Yeah, and you expect a lot more bitterness. Um, you know, you you read like on tap reviews of somebody checking an IPA and saying way too bitter. <laughs> and like back in the like <laughs> five or seven years ago like that was an ipa like that was right. what people wanted yeah like yeah. so kind of like that comment always pisses me off because like sometimes like we brew we still like hop mid-boil we still hop first war hop like even on our new england's like i as a beer drinker i still like getting bitterness in an ipa mm-hmm. i don't want just all sugar and like tail end like oh there's some citra like i still like to know there's hops in it you know like right chris you could probably get anything i missed out on the west coast oh the west coast the the, the visual side of it is like crisp like clear like you can see your fingers on the other side of the glass whereas the new england or the northeast is like if you could see through it it's not hazy enough you know it's <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's that's the that's a big thing too yeah that that more piney dank mm-hmm. hop character versus that citrus uh fruity character mm-hmm. ipa yeah sure. i don't uh, i also don't double dry hop my uh west coast i just draw i dry hop five six days in where mm-hmm. like new england you're dry hopping during bio the next day yeah. yeah so um you know that gets you the haze and all that stuff mm-hmm. so um i mean two completely different styles but Mm-hmm. I, I might be alone in this, but I think West Coast are going to make a comeback. So we just keep we keep ruining them just because we like them. Yeah, I think I, I think my opinion is eventually the NEIPAs are going to become their own 
distinct style and the whole IPA thing is going to become like a, like it's, it's got hops. So or you call it an IPA, but you could, it's going to be a different, completely different style family than the West Coast IPA. I think yeah. the IPA is going to stay with the West Coast and the, mm -hmm. the NE IPA is going to become its own style family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Richard, uh, Richard, you know, summer beer for you. He's sleeping already. Are you sleeping, uh, man? Wake up! No, 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 no. I'm enjoying Come on, this. Uncle I'm Richard. Oh no, I'm I'm fascinated by this IPA chat because I kind I got an IPA so late. So for me, I'm fascinated. You're right; they definitely could become two complete. What year did you get into IPAs, Richard? So I started drinking beer in the end of 2015, and I don't think I really enjoyed. I mean, really enjoyed IPAs until. 2018. I spent like three years just like what was your first six pack challenge. that you bought again? You were like, wow, I like this one. Oh, I, I definitely remember it. Uh, it was Fuego. It was oh, definitely yes, with Fuego. Oh, right. yep. I, I, I was just drinking that, that on the back porch last that week. Was my, that, was a good one. That, that was my weird turn. That was the first one. And it's not that I didn't like any ones before that. That was just the first one. And it, was, it wasn't even like a, a ceremonious thing. It was just the first one I remember just thinking, like, I actually just grabbed it i just remember yeah. grabbing it again like see i don't even know i don't even know if they I call that a West Coast. yeah i don't know what it is either yeah i think it's american um, ipa yeah oh. american yeah, ipa yeah. yeah yeah it was just odd that i'm that i actually went and bought it yeah, that's a good one i'm on a podcast i get stuff all the time and i like them that was the first one i went in and mindlessly just bought for myself out of the blue i'm like oh wait a minute i just bought an ipa huh. And so it was a weird event. I'm like, it's kind of, I remember the thing, like, I wasn't buying it for anybody else or to take to a party. I brought it to bring home. I'm like, oh, look at that. I bought an IPA for myself. <laughs> <laughs> what was, hey, Chris, what was yours? Uh, Heady Topper, probably. Yeah. Oh. I, I, I was thinking it was going to be, like, one of the Vermont ones or, like, a Sierra yeah. Nevada, Stone. Like, like Mine was Lag Lagunitas. Like, yeah, so I liked um, Sierra Nevada's. Um, there's a couple. Do you couple remember Nevada's? You just can't. I mean, but yeah, there was there was a. I think Alchemist Heady Topper was the turning point where it's like, okay, all right, I it's, I kind of get it now. All right, I, I got news <laughs> oh, for you, man. I my moment news. for that. Oh, I should stop you then. My moment for the thing that made me realize that IPs were something on the planet was Hill Farmstead. Is that right? Saying that oh, right? Yeah, oh, okay. Shit. I remember them talk right up to what we were talking about. I'm going, yeah, look, they have had a couple of these out. Yeah, they're neat, but why would somebody wait in line for a, especially an IPA? You're going to wait in line for a, that's re absolutely ridiculous. Put it to my mouth and went, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, now I see what you mean. Like, that was that was the very first IPA I ever had that maybe go. You can now. I could fall in love with an IP. That was the first one. <laughs> Hey, hey, Chris. Yeah. Good news. They started the, uh, distributing Heady Topper in New Jersey today. It's really? Oh, yeah. Oh. See, I'm I'm always torn about that. Like when they were talking about um, um, uh, Lawson, Lawson distributing to New Jersey. Yeah. I was like, that's awesome and all, but stay out of stay out of our market. <laughs> You know, you know what's funny? You want to hear, you want to hear a quick funny story about Lawson's? What's so that? I went there this summer with a bunch of, like, my, my buddies. We're sitting Where there drinking, that? and I'm like, oh, we're looking at the tap list, and I'm looking at uh, Sip of Sunshine. I'm like, it was brewed in Connecticut by Two Roads. I'm like, oh, I want something brewed here. They're like, it's always been brewed in Connecticut. I was like, all right, I'm never buying that fucking beer ever again. <laughs> It's not brewed at the Lawson's Brew. <laughs> no, it's, they, the, the, guy, the guy working in the tasting room was like, "It's never been brewed here in Vermont. It's always been there." I'm like, "Well, you're a dick, and I'm never buying that beer again." <laughs> <laughs> truth be told, I, truth be told, I was drinking it like two weeks ago, <laughs> three weeks ago. But that's a good way. He actually was here. Um, I actually met him at the Arlington. He was here oh, last yeah. summer because he did a collab with uh, Carton. Oh yeah, um, over uh, the summertime. So I actually met him there. Really, hell of a nice guy. Very, very cool. tall. I have a picture with him next me next to him, and uh, I think I come up to his waist or so. 
or something like that. So. <laughs> he actually did a live stream tonight. So, so that's it. So, Richard, your summer beer. My summer beer. Oh God, that's tough. Um, that's so tough because I guess, like Chris said, like I still drink sours in the summer. Yeah, like well, I mean, okay. I, I do like a nice, I do like a nice crisp Belgian beer, though. You know, I like the wit. Yeah, I like you know? a a wit during the, a wit during the summertime. You know, uh, I, some, I that's like why Berliner I always Weiss. I Vic, always brew. Vic always beer. likes the wit. Huh? I like a Berliner Weiss too. That's a nice <laughs> little treat. The gozes, the Berliner Weisses, they're all nice. Uh, <laughs> oh my lord! All right, <laughs> so that's beers. We got a few minutes left here. Real quick round robin. Okay, you tell me what your beers are in the summertime. What's your what song says summer to you, Jeff Greco? Uh, summer wind. Summer wind. Was that Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? I think. Absolutely, Frank Sinatra. Yep. Little Sinatra came across the sea. That's because you're yeah. only a block away from the beach. That's why. Yeah. You think you hear Sinatra in your head all the time? I know. Love it. Yeah, it's a yeah. good one. Chris, what about you? Ooh, uh, I got two. I got I got "Summer Lovin'" from the Grease soundtrack. <laughs> Did you play Danny Zuko in high school, Chris? <laughs> and I have uh, "Summertime" by Will Smith. Okay. There you go. Can you Can't rap the whole song? It. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Richard, what about you? Are you leaving us? No, no, no. I'm trying to think of the song title. Oh, it's killing no. me. Um, "Into the Mystic" by Van Morrison. Okay. I don't know why I think that's such a summery song, but it's just got that kind of light summery feel. And yeah. then um, neither of them have summer titles, but I just think they have summer feels. I like uh, Banana Pancakes by, um, oh, what is hell is his Jack name? Johnson. Um, Jack Johnson, yeah. That's another just summery kind of sitting on the beachy vibe tune. Just want to see a nice day, you know? I like it. That's nice. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Good song. All right, we're going to start wrapping up. We're going to start wrapping up. Chris, tell us Oyster Creek, where you are, what you're doing as far as delivery, et cetera, and so forth. Uh, we're in Waretown, New Jersey, right off of Route 9. Um, we are open six days a week, um, mostly 3 to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Friday, noon to 7 on Saturdays, noon to 6 on Sundays, and we deliver within 10 miles of the brewery. Uh, we always have pickup. We have online ordering. Um, you can get right through our website, oystercreekbrewing.com. You can order online. Um, our menu right now is in flux. We're constantly running out of beer, so, <laughs> so make sure. But we try to put, post on our social media what's available that day. Um, even though that often makes a liar out of us because stuff just runs out midday. So, okay. cool. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Jeff, heavy reel. Yeah, uh, we're located at 613 Boulevard in Seaside. Um, our hours currently, um, we're going to change them week to week, but typically we've been trying to do Thursday through Sunday, one to four. Um, just keep in touch with Instagram. That's where we're most active, where we post our beers and what's available, when stuff sells out, when we're opening up. And uh, that will give you, if you go on Instagram, that will give you the link to our store. We release all the beers online. And uh, yeah, just stay tuned, follow us. And uh, that's pretty much it. All right, thank you, Jeff. On behalf of nice. Richard and myself, uh, this has been Vic's Basement Zoomcast. Chris, thank you for coming on. Jeff. Thank you. You guys Cheers, are bro. awesome. As always, uh, always great guests to have on. So with that, uh, again, South Jersey Beer Scene, SouthJerseyBeerScene.com, Facebook, Instagram, wherever fine podcasts, or in this case, Zoomcast, are found. Actually, I think once these are out, they're on YouTube. So have a great night, everyone. Thanks for watching.